Hello everybody, Jake your resident content cowboy here, yeehaw, and this is the only guide for Warcraft Rumble that you will ever need if you are starting this game. Don't listen to any other content creators out there, they are all liars. I kid actually, there are some great Warcraft Rumble creators out there that I've been watching some of their content and I'll actually talk about some of them later in this video because I think there are some really excellent people that you should check out. First thing is first, I'm going to talk to you about the most important thing in Warcraft Rumble. If you don't take anything else from this, just take this first part, and it's all about money, baby. In any game like this, there are tons of little currencies and sigils and EXP and lots of things that you have to worry about, but your number one thing is going to be gold, and the number one thing that you need to focus on is how you spend your gold early. I'm going to make this incredibly simple. At the start of the game, the number one thing you want to do with your gold is buy every single unit you don't have. The reason you want to do this is because it will raise your collection level that you can see right here. The higher your collection level, the more experience you get from doing all of these different tasks, from opening tomes and doing quests and all this stuff, and you want to raise your collection level early. There is no good reason to only focus on a few units early. Warcraft Rumble is not based around that. So when you go into the store here and you take a look at the grid, which opens up very, very early inside the game, your number one focus should be buying every single unit you don't have. Once you have done that, you can move on to the next step. A mini that you don't have or a unit that is not a leader, like Tyrion right here, costs 90 gold. Sometimes inside the shop, you will see something that is green, a green border on it, meaning it is uncommon already, and it costs 270 gold. You're not getting a gold savings by buying it, but you are upgrading that unit automatically. When a unit upgrades, it gains an additional level and it unlocks a talent spot. I'll talk about talents in a moment because that is the biggest mistake you can make in Warcraft. Rumble. Once you have as many minis and as many leaders as you can possibly get, your collection level should be somewhere around like 13 or 12 or 13 or 14, somewhere in that range. And that's pretty good. That means quests that you're going to be doing and things are going to be giving you a decent amount of XP. Now we're going to talk about the next thing that you're going to want to look at, and that is going to be focusing on powerful units and upgrading them from common to uncommon so you can get them talents and increase your collection level. However, once you do this and you access talents for characters, this is where the biggest pitfall comes into play. Let's take a look at one of the best units inside the game, the safe pilot. It deploys unbound, it does range damage, elemental damage, a lot of cool stuff here, and it has three possible talents. Gnomish cloaking device, coming in hot, and gnomish muttonizer. All of them decent for different reasons, but one of them, gnomish cloaking device, seems particularly strong. Some units have a few options that are pretty good, and some units only have one or two two options that are actually viable inside the game. Of course, things can get balanced over time, but when you upgrade a unit from common to uncommon, like I've done here with my Worgen, I have one opportunity to pick a talent. I picked Lone Wolf. Had I known what exactly Lone Wolf was going to play like inside the game, I never would have chosen this talent, but I don't have another option to choose a talent until this human, until this unit, excuse me, becomes rare at the blue rarity, meaning I need to buy 10 more Worgens inside the shop and then upgrade it. And then I have the ability to possibly inside the grid right here, find a talent that I would like. Picking a bad talent is the worst thing that you can do for some of these units. I would highly recommend do not buy any talents for your units unless they are one of the absolute known best choices for talents inside the game until you've played the game for a while. Just leave it open. Don't worry about it. Maybe Noxious Presence for your Abomination is great. Maybe it's not so great. But buying it early, especially for 250 gold, which is a lot, can really, really hurt you in the long run because you could essentially have a unit for a long time having a, a talent that is not useful at all. So again, the easy tips, if you don't want to watch any else of the anything else in this video, buy all the units, and then once you've bought all the units, don't buy talents right away. Play the game. Don't buy talents right away until you understand more about the game. You will regret it. I, I regret it. Don't do it. Let's talk a little bit more about money really quickly here before we start to move on. Inside the game, as free to play, you will get gold. And as someone who pays money inside the game, you can achieve gold not only through kind of that big 
booster, which is probably the best value inside the game. It's like 20, 25 bucks and it increases all the gold and experience that you get. It's probably the best value if you're looking to put money into Warcraft Rumble. But free to play players are going to get a lot of gold. You get gold in a bunch of different ways. You get gold from doing the PVE missions. You can get gold from doing uh, PVP. You can get gold every time that you complete one of these uh, sigils right here as you're going through PVE. There's just a ton of different ways. Oh, Arclight Surges come by every couple days, and those are going to give you, what is it, 12 maps? One, two, three, four. It's going to give you 10 maps that you can kind of replay in a fun way just to get some extra gold. You actually do get a decent amount of gold inside the game. Sometimes down here, this little free offer that happens in the daily offers gives you gold, but at some point, you are going to kind of hit a wall with gold, and it's when you hit a wall inside your PvE campaign, and at that point, gold is not going to come as fast. Oftentimes, really in any game like this I've ever played, things are coming at you fast in the beginning where it feels like, oh, you can spend a lot. Then you're going to hit a wall. For me, I felt like I kind of hit that wall somewhere, I think, around the hinterlands right here. No, maybe a little later into the campaign. Somewhere in the campaign, I hit a wall around the time I was fighting Jaina Proudmore. And then I was like, oh, okay, I'm... I'm kind of running up to the point where people would need to start spending money or think they would need to start spending money, which is why I think you want to be careful with your gold early. You can change what's on the grid in two ways. First off, if you buy anything, anything that's connected to it, sort of in a uh, horizontal or vertical line will get eliminated. So if I bought right here, this polymorph spell right below this right here, black arrow from uh, Sylvanas would, uh, refresh as well as the necromancer right here so that's something that you can do to kind of move your grid around you also can use your big red button that you get pretty often to move your grid around as well and you could recycle the entire grid and have them pull up a bunch of new things i'll do this for you right now just to show you what it looks like boom your whole grid's gone and you get a bunch of new stuff from what it looks like uh any mini is available throughout this grid and talents for any uh, many that you have upgraded to uncommon or rare are available as long as you haven't bought one. So for instance, if I buy Roost here for Drake, uh, it, nothing else will be available for this unit until I upgrade it to another level. And then outside of that, it looks like leaders are on a bit of a rotation. It doesn't say that inside this shop right now. However, throughout the beta, leaders have been on a rotation where there's an Alliance week, a Beast week, Undead, Black Rock, uh, etc. And I think right now we're on an Alliance rotation. I'm curious to see what will happen when the game officially launches right here. But usually you can just get leaders for that faction at that time. Down here in the daily offers, I would say are some huge no-nos. I would stay far away from buying any experienced tomes with coins. You really don't need this to level up your units. You can level up your units through quests or PvP or just playing them in pve i'll talk more about that later but i would say this entire daily offer shop right now is an absolute no don't spend your gold here spend all of your gold here inside the grid and then as far as spending real currency inside the game real do re me you can find that inside the store if you go lower here down to refilling your coins i've spent i don't know i want to say about 40 bucks in the game i bought a hero uh, Sylvanas, because I wanted to check the, her out. Not very good. And uh, I bought the Arclight Booster thing, which gives you more gold and more experience throughout the game, which is like 25 bucks. So I think that's about what I've spent here inside the game. And honestly, yeah, I feel like they've been pretty decent purchases, but you don't need to buy that for a free-to-play game. I could have gotten this just a little further as a free-to-play player, but I wanted to test a lot of stuff out. Throughout your PvE campaign right here, you're going to deal with some of the bosses inside this game. They're going to present you with some kind of cool stuff. Each map is a little different, and they have different things that you need to figure out in order to be able to beat it. After a little while, you'll unlock more leaders, you'll unlock more troops, you'll unlock guilds, you'll unlock the shop, you'll unlock uh, heroic campaigns. This is a heroic mission right here. In general, your level advantage is going to be massive throughout something like this, and there are also some units that can make your time a lot easier. I'll talk a little bit about some good PvE units later, but in general, you're going to want to try to push this campaign as far as you can, as quickly as you can, because you're going to be able to unlock a ton of stuff because of it. Every map has kind of a different, unique challenge, and they're all actually really fun. I think the PvE aspect of Warcraft Rumble is one of the best parts of it, because it separates it a little bit from just being sort of a Clash Royal clone. 
every time you're playing really anything, quests, PvP, any of it, you'll unlock some experience for your units as you play. And as you complete these heroic missions, you're going to unlock tomes. And then finally, once you complete an entire row with all of the families there, you're going to unlock some additional gold. Let's talk about experience here for a minute. So experience can be earned in numerous ways. Like I've said before, through PvE, through PvP, you also earn experience. You can do these quests right here to earn experience for specific minis that you have. You get to pick one of three. Two of them come from your deck. One of them, I think, is one of your lowest ranked minis. And every time you get a level with one of your minis, you get a collection level increase. So as you can see right here, Arcane Blast will get 170 experience, giving it a level and then if i get that my collection level will go up here i'm at 23 and 11 out of 50 to get to the next level so it would increase to 12 out of 50 as you continue to do this and continue to play these quests you will get more and more experience and level up your units the experience that you get from quests is seems to be on sort of a rotating uh you get a three times bonus sometimes sometimes just a regular amount of quest xp and sometimes a five times bonus and it seems to be dependent based on how long it's been since you've played the quest area but every time it's not green or even sometimes just to play missions and get some xp uh i will do the quest right here Another way to get experience is through these things, tomes right here. So you could take a look at this tome and you will give 394 experience to one of these two units. You could pick a unit that you play a lot or you could pick something that you just want to give experience to so you can level it up inside of your deck. This is a moment where you can be more specific with some of your units, but at the same time, you can also take opportunities like this just to level up your minis broadly to increase your collection level. What I've been doing is if it's a mini I don't really care about on either side I'll just give it to the lower level one so I can increase my collection level and then if it's one that I play a lot I'll make sure I funnel a lot of experience into it something like the Huntress or the Harpies or something like that. As you can see, again, you gain stats every time you level up these units, and it's really important. If you're multiple levels above your opponents in PvE and in PvP, which we'll talk about later, the advantage is massive. Also, as I mentioned before, along the same lines of experience, if you upgrade a unit from common to uncommon, as you're going to see right here, it's going to cost stars, which means you have multiple copies of that unit and some energy. You'll click the upgrade button. By the way, energy feels pretty plentiful right now inside the game. Click the upgrade button. This unit will also increase in level as well as rarity moving up one level right here and moving up to uncommon rarity. Again, this will unlock the ability for me to buy a talent for the footman inside the grid. And again, be very careful with these talents. Some of them are good and some of them are just... Ooh, you're going to regret them. This is not directly tied to experience, but another way to increase your unit's level are through these things right here that you are able to obtain inside the dungeon. So inside the dungeon, you will unlock permanent upgrades for your leader's army once you complete dungeon levels. We'll talk about dungeons here in a second, but as you can see, any alliance unit I slot in right here, this is silver, will get plus two levels, alliance units plus two levels, a tank unit plus two, ranged, squad etc and then of course my leader right there in silver so as i'm speaking to you or as i'm recording this i don't know as if as i'm speaking to you actually it makes sense because you could be watching this at any moment the dungeon is an alliance week next is going to be horde you can see it kind of moving down the list right here so i have a high level for my Tyrion right here and very low for Jaina and Maiev. I have not played them a ton inside the dungeons or really at all inside the dungeons. So if I were to complete a dungeon, I actually get multiple upgrades to their army right here. And I'm coming close to the level of my army for this dungeon here for Tyrion. So I'm only getting one upgrade at a time. Let's talk quickly about dungeons. You get to select which hero out of the heroes you own that you'd like to take into the dungeon for that faction this week. So I'm going to take Jaina in right here and I'm going to show you at the start of your dungeon, you choose a relic and you're going to choose one each time you complete a mission. There are three total inside of this dungeon right here. You'll pick one that you think is best for your team. A lot of times you can find something where you go, oh wow, that's actually really good. Your alliance minis deal increased damage back to their attackers for each other alliance minion nearby. I've got a few alliance minis that's not too bad they gain bloodlust if they're near allies your leader recovers health all 
decent bonuses, some for your particular deck much better than others, but in general, all pretty strong. And it's actually nice. They show you which minis it affects right below each one. So you can see this one obviously would affect a ton because if you're near an ally, you get bloodlust. Let's go ahead and use this. Just like the PVE campaign, you're going to fight through multiple sort of specific instances right here that the game has set up for you. And I'm just going to fight through this really quick and fast forward to I could show so I can show you the next part. Once you complete each map, you're going to obtain one of these onks, which will just give you the ability to revive and try it again here. And then also some energy. Like I said earlier, you get tons of energy inside this game. It's pretty easy to come by. So I've now completed this dungeon. I claim an energy reward. And again, because I'm a higher level than it, I claim multiple rewards for my army right here. I can increase things I already have, like my spell and my leader, or I can add a new one to my slot, which is siege damage. It seems like you can add a bunch of different ones to these bottom three spots. And I would recommend early on just increasing the things you already have, especially things like leader. Just giving your leader an extra level is pretty amazing right here. So you're gonna see me increase a couple of these i'm going to increase my spell slot right here and then we're going to get one more and i'm going to increase my leader one more time as you continue doing dungeons the dungeon level increases and you continue to gain upgrades for this particular leader's deck essentially as you are going click finished the dungeon will reset and you get to do it again there's no penalty for losing there's there's nothing you can do this a bunch of times come up with good strategies and try to increase your leader's deck again in doing this you'll take this into pvp and pvp did i say pvp and pvp pvp and pve the campaign and be stronger also it's worth noting that you can change the upgrades for your army here so these bottom three upgrades you can change them as you progress through the game and you will have options of things to change them out for as you unlock more of them so you're not picking a horrible thing if you put them in these additional slots. I just like upgrading the things that I already have and that I know will sit in this deck for a while. Let's now talk briefly about PvP. PvP is really interesting and I think it made the game kind of pay to win when it first started and there's still some pay to win elements of a game like this of course. However, it's way better than it was previously. So your three highest leader honor is going to put you into your category right here. I haven't been playing a ton of PvP right now. I'm just in silver one but as the game comes out i'm going to be playing more and more and more you can grind all the way up to arc light mastermind and as you go you will unlock lots of different bonuses you'll unlock tomes you'll unlock leaders like sylvanas right here there are lots of cool things that you get in pvp and as you start you're going to be playing against bots and things like that so it's pretty easy to increase your pvp level once you start this now a few things to notice Inside of PvP, when you are below 1,000 honor, all units are capped at 1. Below 2,000, all units are capped at 3. And below 3,000, all units are capped at level 5. Your minis, as it says right here, will be divided by level 3 and then rounded up. So before this, when I got to silver, before this change, it wasn't always like this. As soon as you got out of bronze before, it was just your level divided by 3. I was literally having level three and four units going up against eights and nines and you would get decimated by the like i had one game where i won and i felt like an absolute hero against in crazy high level units but in general the pay to win or even just the amount of time that another player had been grinding was so unfair this is way better now so all the way up until you have three thousand honor which will take you a little while i've played a decent amount of pvp right here and i'm still at only you know 1300 honor with like my favorite deck or things like that uh you will be in a very reasonable state for pvp i probably wouldn't start it until you've played a little bit of the campaign but the nice thing is with the level cap uh, below 1,000 honor of one, no matter what you bring in, you're going to have a reasonably fair time and you're going to have a good chance at beating your opponent. Very early on, you unlock guilds at 10 sigils and inside of guilds, your team will collectively sort of pool together to fight for these unlocks inside the game. So for this season, you're going to be able to unlock Sylvanas Windrunner, this fun emote, and then an epic upgrade core. I haven't really got to the part of the game where upgrade cores are that 
not relevant. And from all the content I see out there, it doesn't appear that they're super relevant, but I'm sure it's a nice bonus once you get very, very high level inside the game. Also, your clan together, or your guild together, excuse me, is going to... Uh, pool together and unlock additional tomes. So you'll unlock additional tomes for each family inside of the game, and you'll just use those to level up your units. It's a very cool system, and you really don't have to think about it. Just by playing the game, you're going to get this. It is your PvP honor and your Arclight Surge uh, participation that is going to increase these things. And then just having a semi-active guild will give you a chance to unlock a lot of this stuff. Last season, they had Core Hounds as the 10,000 reward. This guild I'm in got there very, very quickly. So it's an easy thing. It's free to join, and it's going to unlock some benefits for you if you're playing the game. Real quick, I'm going to talk briefly about some good units and some good heroes. I'll have some more in-depth videos about this right here. But as you're starting out, I think really strong heroes. Tyrion is a very, very good hero. It's a tank that heals. Maiev is pretty interesting. It's an unbound hero. I'd say it's probably a little tricky for new players. But once you get the hang of it, I think it's a pretty strong one. Hogger, super simple, super good for new players. Very cool. I absolutely love Murkai. I think it's probably too cheesy uh, and maybe not perfect for newer players, but I absolutely love this hero. Stay far away from Chalga. It's insane. Uh, we've got Rend right here. Rend Blackhand is one of the more popular ones. Very, very strong hero for newer players. Both Horde heroes I think are actually pretty good. General Dracoseth, not bad either. These are all okay. I'm normally, like from Warcraft 3, I'm a big Horde fan, but I actually don't love the Horde heroes in this. I probably like our little Tauren here more than the others. This hero right here, Baron. Baron Rivendare I think is a great one for new players. Really, really solid. Sylvanas I don't think is very good. I think you're going to see this unit get a buff. I don't think Sylvanas is good. It's extremely expensive. And then uh, Blood Mage Thalnos is kind of like Jaina. It's like not the best. Uh, and then Sneed. I have not unlocked Sneed. I've seen a lot of Sneed, but the game has not given it to me. I think Sneed is actually probably pretty good for PvE, PvP, and somewhat for newer players too. But easy recommendations. Tyrion, Hogger, uh, Rend... Eat, like probably I guess you would say Karen Bloodhoof out of the horde right here. You could definitely say Baron and those are the ones I'd recommend for newer players. As far as units, you get the safe pilot. That one's really, really great. Harpies are amazing. Blackrock Pyromancer, great. Quillbore, one of the best, probably my favorite unit in the entire game. Huntress, really, really strong. There are a lot of strong alliance units, I've noticed. Let's see, what are some other strong ones that I think are really good? Blizzard's a great spell. Polymorph's not bad. Neither's Chain Lightning. Chain Lightning's really good also. Bloodhoof Torrin, or Stonehoof Torrin, excuse me. Very, very solid unit as well. Gargoyle is a cheesy unit that is really good inside of PvE. Ooh, Whelp Eggs. Whelp Eggs are super, super good. They're unbound, which means you can play them anywhere on the map. They're just like really solid. They explode with a certain talent. Really nice. So those are some of the big units I'd look out for early on. The last thing I'm going to talk to you about is a basic game mechanic, but it's important to understand. I'm going to explain it very briefly, and it's aggro. So the basic idea behind this is the first unit something comes into its range of is going to take its aggro right here. So you can see this unit jumps towards me and it is going to be aggro to me. This is the unit that's going to be fighting. As these chickens come up, they're all going to fight my hero right here until something else aggros them. As you can see, I'm putting two of my ranged units behind my tower right here because they're behind my tower and the enemies have already started attacking my tower. That is the target that they have aggroed to. My units will not start soaking up damage for them unless they are closer to them and then those units are stunned. So once something picks a target, that is what they're going to attack essentially until either one of these units are knocked out. So practically what something like this means is you want to take an opportunity to put a tank in front of your ranged units like this. These units are in range of my tower right here, but they're using all of their energy to fight my stone hoof torrent rather than some of my squishier units. Now you 
can see some of my units are actually a little bit faster here than my Torin, and because of that, they might get targeted before my Torin does inside this fight. As you can see, Torin is the furthest out there, so at the same time, this Ogre Magi is not attacking my units right there. It was attacking the front line for those. You can think about aggro a lot. So if I put my Huntress out here and then I interrupt these two Raptors right here with my Quillbore, the Quillbore is going to take the aggro from them instead of my Huntress. As my Huntress continues, it's going to be faster and it's going to run into these units. So my Quillbore will not end up taking the aggro and all of these units are focusing on my Huntress, which I'd rather have not happen. So a lot of what you're trying to do inside the game with some of these fights is you're trying to put your tankier units up front, get the attention of the enemies so that you can use the units you want to do damage from range. That's a basic look at aggro, but that's essentially how it works inside the game. The only thing that changes aggro are things like taunts and stuns and things like that. If a unit is stunned, it will reset its priorities. So in that moment, the unit will stop attacking what it had been attacking before, and it will reprioritize to the closest target. This concept is why you can see these two raptors attacking this tower, and no matter what I put down right here, they're going to continue attacking that tower until they are then knocked out. So I could put not only harpies down, which are flying and ground units can't attack flying, but you are going to end up once again here, you can see, have all these units attack the tower instead of my Huntress. There are times where this is good, and there are times where you absolutely don't want that to have happen, and you want to make sure that your enemies are not attacking your towers. Of course, all of this stuff could take a deeper look, and I'm going to be making more Warcraft Rumble videos here on my channel. So if you like it, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. I've got a lot more cool stuff coming soon. Let me talk to you really quickly about some other creators in the space. These are just some creators I've found that have some pretty cool Warcraft Rumble content. I don't know any of them, but I think you could take a look at them. Xcoundrel right here has got some pretty cool stuff. I've watched a lot of his Warcraft Rumble videos. I've watched a few videos from this guy, Big Math Warcraft Rumble, and he seems pretty knowledgeable. And then there's this guy, Bulava Warcraft Rumble, who makes me laugh and seems like a very, very good player. I'm sure there's a lot of great content creators. If you've seen others that you like, leave them in the comments. Let me know what you thought about this guide. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I love you. And I will see you all next time. Mm.